Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell. I am going to recap all of my Amiga 2000 power supplies and I'm also going to uh, remove the old fans and install brand new fans in each of these power supplies. I have six Amiga 2000 computers, so that's, uh, uh, and each one of those computers have power supplies in them, so I want to get those recapped. Plus, I have two uh, spare Amiga 2000 power supplies, and this is one of them. So I thought I'd do the spares first. You know, recap these, change out the fan, basically future proof it, right? And uh, let me get my pointer. And uh, wipe down the outside, outside with WD-40, condition the metal, um, and uh, blow out the dust, clean it, make sure it's uh, ready for another 25, 30 years of use, you know, of heavy Amiga 2000 use. And so I, I thought I'd do the external, I mean, the, the spare, the spare Amiga 2000 power supplies first. This way, when I open up each one of my Amiga 2000 computers, I can just pull its power supply out and put in the one that's already recapped. And it's already been cleaned, already has a new fan installed. And then close back up that Amiga 2000 and print out a label and stick it on the bottom of the computer or on the back that, you know, the power supply has been recapped and it has a new fan um, installed. So, um, I thought that I would turn on the video camera while I'm working on this first one here to show you guys how to properly do this because there's a few videos floating around on YouTube uh, where people have recapped Me 2000 Power Supply. They've done it wrong. Yes, they did it wrong. They did it the wrong way. And they took out the old fan and they put in new fans and they put in they, they install the wrong type of fan and I'm going to talk more about that as we get into this video um, if you have not subscribed to my channel I would really appreciate that you do that um, that'll really help my channel out, channel out a lot uh, if you're into like vintage computers you know you like uh, watching content about vintage computers and uh, computer gaming and stuff like that, you know, and, and uh, unboxing and reviews of computer items and uh, computer, you know, vintage computer pickups and things like that. Um, I think you're going to love my channel. So, and you'd be doing me a great favor if you go ahead and subscribe. I mean, you know, it, it takes a lot of work and effort to, to create each one of these videos. And so if you really enjoy my content, you can show me how much you appreciate my content by subscribing, you know, and maybe hitting that like button so that every time I post a new video, hey, I mean, you hit the like button, you hit the bell notification, and, I, and then whenever I do a new video, you'll be notified. Hey, oh, looks like Hans did a new video. Okay, I better go watch it, you know. Anyway, let's get on with uh, recapping this Amiga 2000 power supply and installing a new fan into this power supply. Before I open up the power supply and we take a peek inside, I first wanted to go over the specs of this particular power supply. Um, it's made by Litton, and the model number is PA4201-5A. It's a 200 watt power supply. Now some of these power, power supplies are 230 watt. 
but most of them, the majority of them, are 200 watts. Um, 5 volts, 20 amps. 12 volts, 8 amps. And this is what you really have to pay close attention to, right? The negative 5 volts and the negative 12 volts. Uh, negative 5 volts is 300 milliamps, okay? Negative 12 volts is also 300 milliamps. And if you exceed the, the current, uh, the maximum current of either one of these, you can actually burn up your power supply. You can blow your power supply. Okay? This is easily done, like, especially if you have installed, like, a video toaster. Okay? The video toaster board itself requires a minimum of 200 milliamps on the negative 12 volt line. It doesn't matter how much you have on the 5 volts or 12 volts, you better make sure you do not exceed this 300 milliamps on the negative 12 volts or the negative 5 volts, or else you will blow your power supply if you do. So if you have a video toaster installed, it uses a minimum of 200 milliamps. So there's 200 milliamps already of this 300 milliamps. Okay, and for many of you that are using a video toaster, you're also using like probably a YC board or some kind of uh, like a different type of board that is used with your video toaster. And that board is going to use a minimum of 100 milliamps. So there's your 300 milliamps right there. Okay, and then um, the negative 12 volts is also used for the op amp that's part of the Amiga 2000 motherboard's audio circuitry. The op amp, you know, part of the audio circuitry, uses both positive 12 volts and negative 12 volts. Okay, so you've exceeded the 300 milliamps. It's very important you do not exceed this. And that's the reason why, during when the video toaster was very popular in the 90s, the early 90s, um, uh, the Bigfoot power supply was produced. And the main difference between the Bigfoot power supply and the normal Amiga 2000 power supply had to do with this negative 12 volts and the negative 5 volts. Instead of them having 300 milliamps each, they had 500 milliamps each. And so you were less likely to burn up your power supply. And you had more than enough, you know, you had a half an amp on your negative 12 volts and half an amp on your negative 5 volts. So yeah, you got to be very careful when you're plugging in a bunch of boards in your Amiga 2000 computer that you do not exceed the milliamperage of the negative 5 volts or the negative 12 volts. If you do, you will fry your power supply. And I just thought it was very important that I, you know, that I talk about this. Okay, so now, <clears throat> now we'll actually open up the Amiga 2000 power supply and take a peek inside and I'll unsolder the capacitors and I'll write down on this paper here what the values are and um, we're also going to remove the original fan. I want to talk a little bit about that fan and uh, explain the type of fan that you should, you know, the type of replacement fan that you should get. Also, I want to talk about the circuitry that's actually inside that fan that controls the speed of the fan, um, judging, you know, depending on the temperature of the power supply. And this is one of the main reasons why, I mean, a lot of you had a complaint that when you were testing your Amiga 2000 power supply, the fans seemed to be running, like, really slow. Well, there's nothing wrong with the fan. Nothing wrong with the power supply. It's supposed to do that until the power supply heats up. And so what I'm going to do when I remove the original fan on this power supply here, the Amiga 2000 power supply, is I'm going to carefully peel back the label to show you that... 
uh, speed control circuitry that's actually part of the Amiga 2000 fan. It was a custom made fan for the Amiga 2000 power supplies. Now, this type of a fan is not required. You know, and we'll talk more about that as I get get into the fan part of this video. All right. Um, to take the cover off, you're going to need a low torque screwdriver like this one right here. Now, if these are tight, then you're going to need a full-size number two Phillips like this just to break the seal. And you stop using this one and you go to the lower torque screwdriver. That's the proper screwdriver to use for this size bolt because these are fine machine threads. They're easily stripped if you use a full-size number two like this. Okay, and I've seen so many of you in your videos use a full-size number two screwdriver on these screws, and then you wonder why you strip them. Don't use a full-size number two on these screws. You want to use what's called a low-torque number two screwdriver. And that's a screwdriver like this. These are made in Germany, and I highly recommend that you get a set of these. Okay, these are made in Germany. Okay. All right. Yeah, these are kind of tight. Okay. I'm going to have to use full size, full size number two just to break that seal. Do not put down a lot of downward pressure on that you'll strip those threads trust me i know what i'm talking about this one for some reason is kind of tight because of how tight that is i think this has been somebody's been in this power supply before and they might have stripped this these threads um but that's what they look like i think these they're not steel i think they're made out of aluminum they're easily stripped very easily stripped and they're very fine machine threads now when you take these out you put them back exactly in the same holes that they came out of put them back try to put them back in those same holes so i usually lay the screws out um the way they're coming out of here. Okay, yeah, for some reason these are really tight and they shouldn't be that tight. Okay. Yeah, lay them out on your workbench exactly how they came out. Exactly how they came out. Now, you should not have to use the full size number screwdriver to put this back together. You should not have to use the full side number two. All right, so that's out. And what I like to do, I like to put it like this. And use the number two to just uh, break those seals on those bolts. Yeah. Just to break that seal. Yeah, break that seal. There we go. Let me get it where you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, get it where you can see what I'm doing. See, that's too tight. Something's up with that. They should not be that tight. That means somebody's been in here. Or what they did is they used a power screwdriver at the factory. And they went too far and they stripped it. They stripped these. I wouldn't be surprised if they were stripped. That's why I don't I do not recommend using a powered screwdriver. Only lazy, stupid people use powered screwdrivers. Always use if you want if you're a fine craftsman like me and a high quality assembler like me, you will always use a just a normal hand screwdriver. Never use 
a powered screwdriver. Only lazy dumbasses use powered screwdrivers. Okay? Just don't do it. Don't use a powered screwdriver. Especially on, fi on fine machine thread bolts. Oh yeah, you'll strip them out. You'll strip it. Alright, so... We're going to pull the cover off. Alright, alright. Pull that cover off. There you go. Yeah, that definitely needs to get blown out. Oh my god. There's a label, in case you want to, you know, read that label. There it is. Right there. Okay, there's the label. And, yeah, this will... I usually just take, like, my brush like this. A makeup brush. <laughs> just brush that out real quick like that. No big deal. See? Now, you do not want to wipe down the inside of this with WD-40. You do not want any kind of an oily residue on the inside of this metal. I mean, if you have to do that, you want to make sure you dry that really good. You do not want an oily residue in the, on the inside of this power supply. Because then the dust will stick to this. That dust, I mean, the, the oily residue will attract that dust and it'll just clog up the power supply. The airflow of the power supply. So, yeah. Now the outside, yeah, see how it's got, it's got like that, uh, it's got a little bit of corrosion going on, on right there. If you wipe that down with WD-40 and then wipe it again with a clean rag, that'll really condition that metal and keep it from oxidizing or rusting any further. So, yeah. All right. So let me zoom in. Uh, let me zoom in like that so we can look inside and I want to talk a little bit about what's going on inside this power supply yeah this is really dirty really dirty anyway it's now time for a quick you guessed it a quick commercial break people and I will be right back afterwards Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell. Are you sick and tired of all the dumbasses in the checkout lines using debit and credit? Well, you can become one of the smart ones by switching to cash today. Yes, cash. It's still the best form of payment. It's easy, quick, and so convenient, too. Cash, what's in your wallet? <clears throat> All right. Um, let's get this fan out, shall we? Um, I went ahead and blew out the dust out of this power supply so that you can better see what I'm doing in here. Um, but let me get my pointer. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the, power, uh, the fan from the power supply. And I'll show you the proper way of doing that. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about this fan. Then, in the next segment of this video, I'm going to show you how to properly and safely remove this board uh, from the case. Okay, so let's get started here. All right, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit like that. That should be good enough right there. And, okay, I'm using... Uh, number well this is a normal number two Phillips screwdriver uh, make sure I'm still underneath the camera Yeah. 
well, before I take the screws out of here, let me let me see something here. Before I go any further, I'm going getting ahead of myself here. Um, we want to. Okay, let me see if I can pull this out without. Uh, okay. This should pull out of here without any problems. Yeah, it shouldn't. Huh. I wonder why it's not coming out. Yeah, it should be. Ugh. Should be coming out of here. No problem. I don't want to pull on those wires too hard because, yeah, what the hell is going on here? come out of here? I mean, yeah, it, okay, what the hell, oh, come out of there, wow, okay, some reason like wow why I don't want to pull on those wires too hard <sighs> yeah this should come out of there I mean come on man this should come out of there okay it's out of there I don't know why this is like that like that it shouldn't be that hard to get out um, yeah, it shouldn't be that hard to get out. Okay, pop that out like that. And be careful with these wires. I don't want these wires getting cut on the metal, right? And the reason why I did that is because I wanted to show you where this is plugged in. Um, it's plugged in right there. And it is keyed, but just in case, because some of these are soldered in, some of them are not keyed, it appears that the red wire, okay, the red wire there goes toward the front of the power supply, and the black wire goes toward the rear. Anyway, this should just unplug right out of there, like that. And like I said, it is keyed. Is that type of a connector? So, yeah, it is keyed. Okay, let me zoom back out again. Okay, zoom out a little bit more. All right, and we're going to continue uh, removing that fan. Okay. Continue removing that fan. Very carefully remove this fan. Okay. And now we're going to take a look at the inside of the power supply itself. Okay. Got to be real careful with these wires here. Got to be real careful with those wires. Okay. Real careful with those. And it looks like. Got some stuff all in here. Yeah, I'll get that out of there. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
and there's the outside of it. And the outside of it. Okay. And when I put the new fan on, um, this one's kind of, okay, this fan guard right here is kind of like old and, I don't know, it's got corrosion or something on it. So I'm not going to put that one back on. But I got this real nice gold one here, but I don't know. I think, I was trying to think if the new mounting screws will go through those holes or not. You know, we'll see. I might have to clean up the old one and just put that one back on. We'll see. We'll see, people. Okay, when I come back, um, I'll talk about this fan. Actually, let me zoom in. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, as you know, the Amiga 2000 is the best designed and the highest quality of all of the Amiga models. And so it would figure that they would have a very high quality, high performance fan installed in its power supply. This right here is a ball bearing fan made in Japan, very high quality. Okay, it is rated at 12 volts DC and 0 0.15 amps, which is 150 milliamps. Okay, so 12 volts DC, 150 milliamps. Okay, if you want to replace this fan. It's got a three pin uh, connector right here, and it is keyed. Okay, when you're looking at it like this, um, the red wire would be on what? The right hand side, black wire would be on the left, you know? So I think, let, let me look at something real quick here. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, anyway. Um, it's got clips that are here on the, on the ends. Let me zoom back out a little bit. It's got clips right here. Um, I'm not going to reuse these. Anyway, it's got clips that, these clips that slide over the fan. And then it's got these machine thread bolts that screw into there. I'm not going to use these. Okay. But I have another fan coming like this. It too is a 7, a 7, let me zoom out a little bit more. It too has 7 fan blades. Okay. Of similar size. It too is 12 volts DC. 0 0.15 amp you know, uh, which is 150 milliamps, ball bearing fan made in Japan. And like this original fan here, the airflow is approximately 30 cubic feet per minute. That's quite a bit of airflow that's flowing through these, the, the, you know, this power supply. Um, let me move my chair back a little bit. I noticed that in a lot of your videos, you guys are replacing this fan with a sleeve bearing fan. Don't do it. Do not do it. Okay? There are two kinds of muffin fans. These are called muffin fans or case fans. You have ball bearing fans and you have sleeve bearing fans. Okay? 
And to give you an idea of the difference in quality, sleeve bearing fans have a life, an average life expectancy of five to ten years. Ball bearing fans have a have an average life expectancy of 20 to 35 years. Yes, you heard that right. And this is the reason why in most vintage computers you will find ball bearing fans in the power supplies, not sleeve bearing fans. Now companies today have come up with lots of you know fancy names for their sleeve bearings like you know fluid bearing, rifle bearing, uh, barrel, uh, rifle barrel, fluid bearing, hydrofluid bearing. I mean, all these fancy names for sleeve bearings. But they're just sleeve bearing fans. They're low quality fans. They're okay as a case fan. They're perfect for a case fan. But I do not recommend using a sleeve bearing fan in a power supply. You want a high quality fan like this, a ball bearing fan, and they're usually made in Japan or Germany. You want a fan like this. And I have eight fans coming. I bought I found them last night on eBay, brand new, and I'll show you the proper fan to use in your Amiga 2000 power supply. And like I said, it too is a ball bearing fan. It too was made in Japan, 12 volts DC. 0.15 amps, which is 150 milliamps, uh, 30 cubic feet per minute airflow, which is, is perfect. Okay, a lot of you are using Nachua fans. You're, you're installing Nachua fans, thinking that like those are the best fans that you could put in your Mi 2000 power supply, and again, you're wrong. Nachua fans are way overpriced sleeve bearing fans. They are basically garbage. Overpriced garbage. Only stupid people waste their money buying Nachua fans. This is so important I'm going to repeat it. Only stupid people waste their money buying Nachua fans. These are nothing more than sleeve bearing fans that have a fancy name attached to the sleeve bearing. They're slow quality sleeve bearing fans that are way overpriced. Okay? And yet some of you people have actually installed these overpriced sleeve bearing fans in your Amiga 2000 power supply. I suggest you remove that piece of garbage and install a ball bearing fan like this that's made in Japan with the proper specs. Okay? Um, I, I have been trained to not only work on power supplies, but I have been trained on how to build power supplies. I've actually built many switching power supplies, so I know what I'm talking about. Do not use sleeve bearing fans. I don't care what fancy name they put on those sleeve bearings or what fancy name the company is, like Nachoa. Do not install sleeve bearing fans in your Amiga 2000 power supply. Don't do it. I'm going to show you in, in part two of this video, and there is going to be a part two, I'm going to show you the proper fan to install in an Amiga 2000 power supply. All right, in order to recap this board, it has to be first removed from the case. So you're going to need a low torque number two screwdriver like this one. Okay, and you're going to need a wrench like this, a 7 millimeter wrench like this. All right, so let's get started. Okay, first thing we need to do is we're going to need to, we're 
I'm going to need to unplug. Let me do I have a pencil somewhere. I need to mark the top of that with a pencil or something so that I know, okay, which one goes on top. I don't think it matters, but yeah. I want to make sure that I mark that so that I know which one goes on top. Okay. All right. So this has to come off this switch like that. It comes pulls straight out. And this one here, same thing, pulls right out. Okay. And then we turn that around, make sure it's still underneath the camera. I use my low torque number two screwdriver because these are fine thread machine screws. You might have to use a full size number two just to break that that bond. You know, but other than that, other I mean after that, you should be able to use the low torque number two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, they got a nut on the other side. They might have used Loctite on that nut. Looks like it also has a teeth washer or tooth washer. So yeah, it's got a tooth washer. So this will come out. I'll put this over here. I don't want them getting lost. Uh, yeah. Okay. Pull that out. And, okay, so we got that out of there. The other thing that, okay, make sure these wires don't get messed up. Am I still underneath the camera? Yeah, I'm still underneath the camera. There is a nut on a bolt that holds the ground wire to the case right there. And that is what this number seven, or excuse me, seven millimeter uh, wrench is for. Undo that. Okay. It should fit right over that. Yeah. It should fit right over that. Uh, come on. come out, I mean, yeah. Okay, should do it. Yeah, should do it. This might have had a tooth washer on it too. I think it does. Or a lock washer. Probably a tooth washer. Okay, so that's for the ground. Yeah, I think it has a tooth washer on it. Yeah, small tooth washer. It's got a tooth washer. Or, okay, it's a lock washer, I think. Yeah, a lock washer. On both sides of that. So remember that when you take this off, put I mean, you know, when you put it back on again, there's a tooth washer right there. Okay, and then they have, I'm going to put these, this washer back on here. I don't want to lose it. And I'll put this back, this back on there like, oh, come on. Put this back on there. I don't want to lose this, so okay, this is all off of there. So I can now take the circuit board out. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to lose that. I want to put it back exactly the way it goes. Okay. Now, if I if memory serves me correctly, let me zoom in a little bit. 
If memory serves me correctly, there are three screws that hold this power supply on. Shit, can I get to that one? One of them is there. Now, this does come out. That power switch there, if you press the, the tabs in, you can get that out. Okay, you can get that out. Just press those tabs in. And it should come... Okay, it should come right the fuck out. Let me see. I've got brand new switches for this. If I need to, you know, put a brand new switch in there, I could do that. If I need to... Yeah, this doesn't want to come out. Like, wow. Like, wow, man. Let me get my screwdriver. See if I can force it out. Yeah. Shouldn't have to pry it like that. It should pop right out of there. And it's not wanting to... Not wanting to pop out. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, it's not wanting to pop out. Yeah, I don't want to pry it. Yeah, that, that should come right out of there. It should come right out. Wow. It's not wanting to come out. Okay, you know what? I'm going to leave it in there. <laughs> I don't want to damage that, so... And I think that switch is still, I mean, it's a good switch. Nothing wrong with that switch. So I don't want to damage it. So, yeah, I don't want to damage that switch. But I have brand new switches like that. Because I've had to replace those switches before in these power supplies. So. Okay, so that one's out. This one's out. Alright, that one's out. Okay. And then just pull this. It should come right out of there. Yeah, pull it right out. And there's that screw. And yeah, there you go. And uh, let me zoom out a little bit. And we got like some miler right here. It's a sheet of miler that I think just it just drops in. I just wipe that down with a sponge. Give it like a sponge bath, you know. Yeah, just wipe that down. We're good. This you notice that's under the high voltage side, not the low voltage side. Yeah. So it's on this side. Opposite side of where the fan, well, right underneath where the power switch is and the power connector. This is the high voltage side, and they have this miler here to keep it from sparking or keep that high voltage, you know, underneath the board from possibly arcing or sparking on this metal. That's a common problem with a lot of the, um, the Commodore CR2 monitors that were made by Magnavox. Uh, so you just the way you fix that problem, you just resolder those connections on the board, and you put a piece of miler like this between the shield and the bottom of the board. It'll keep those monitors from popping and arcing like that. But yeah, so you want to come back? We'll continue the video. Okay. So I'm going to take my makeup brush, <laughs> brush this out a little bit, you know, just get out as much of that dust and everything as possible, you know, especially here. Um, yeah. If you notice... Um, I don't know how well you can see it, but <clears throat> there's no screw here on this side, but the circuit board goes in between these two things, that are, these metal that's sticking out here. The board, I don't know if you can see it, how well you can see that, but it goes inside there, in between those two metal pieces that have come out. 
the board slides into there. Okay, for that corner. Just thought I'd show you that. All right, here is the the main part of the board. Um, this power supply has been turned off for a long time, so I don't think it's going to zap me. Uh, this here is the high voltage side. Okay, the high voltage side. This is the low voltage side. Okay. And um, these, okay. Um, okay, this whole thing here unplugs. See, see right there, it unplugs. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. Just unplug that damn thing. See how it's like keyed and it's got a clip on it. So it just plugs in. Okay, that whole thing. The whole assembly plugs in, and then it makes it easier for you to work on the the power supply itself. Now these capacitors here, they are computer grade capacitors. They are computer grade. Um, they appear to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and make a list of all these capacitors right here and I'll be right back okay I'll be right back after I do that all right I'm hoping that you guys can read my chicken scratch <laughs> this is a list of the main capacitors that you will need to recap and Amiga 2000 power supply. You need two capacitors, uh, 680 microfarad, 200 volts. These are computer grade capacitors and what that means they have the type of leads that are bent or solid metal leads that clip into the board. Okay, it's important that these two capacitors are computer grade capacitors. And we'll get more into that in part two of this video. 200 volt. And make sure they are of the proper lead pitch, which is 10 millimeters. All right. You'll need one uh, 3,300 microfarad capacitor at 16 volts with a lead pitch of 8 millimeters. You'll need two... 3,300 microfarad capacitors at 10 volt. You could probably also just make all three of these 16 volt. Um, with a lead pitch of 8 millimeters. The lead pitch is very important when you're getting these capacitors. Make sure you get the proper lead pitch. The, cap, the, the, cap, the capacitors need to sit flush onto the board. And that's why the lead pitch is important. That's why I wrote it down. You'll need one 220 microfarad uh, capacitor rated at 25 volts with a lead pitch of 5 millimeters. That's a standard lead pitch. You'll need two 220 microfarad capacitors at 35 volts, lead pitch also 5 millimeters. And I would recommend getting all these capacitors with a temperature rating of 105C. Okay, so this is a list of the capacitors that you'll need uh, to recap this power supply. <clears throat> All right. Um, to recap on what I just said, let me get to my page. I wrote down all that stuff. Okay, yeah. Um, these two capacitors here, uh, capacitors, uh, these are computer grade capacitors. And I'll show you what those look like when I get the new ones. Uh, they are 680 microfarad, 200 volt. They have a lead pitch of 10 millimeter. 
It's very important that you get the proper lead pitch on these capacitors. Uh, this capacitor is 3,300 microfarads at 16 volt. It has a lead pitch of 8 millimeters. These two capacitors here, they are also 3,300 microfarads, but they have, they are rated at 10 volts. I guess you could substitute 16 volt, make all three of these the same. Um, they too have a lead pitch of 8 millimeters. <clears throat> Um, this capacitor here, this one right here, that one is 220 microfarad, 25 volts, has a lead pitch of 5 millimeters. And these two capacitors here, they are also 220 microfarad, but they are rated at 35 volts. They too have a lead pitch of 5 millimeters. Well, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for part two, which will be coming up real soon. I just have to order the parts, and as soon as I get them in, I'll go ahead and do part two of this video series, showing you how to properly recap an Amiga 2000 Power Supply, and how to replace the fan, and the correct fan to use. This is also a good time, while you have the circuit board out like this, is to examine your wiring. Because a lot of times, right here, like on this one, I don't know if you can see that, but the wiring will be damaged. Because it takes a lot of force to pull these out of your, your hard drives or whatever, CD-ROM drives. So if these are in bad shape or they're in questionable condition, this would be a good time to unsolder them from the board and solder on, you know, a new set of wires. Uh, but in general, they'll, they'll be in pretty good shape, you know, so usually you won't have to worry about that. But if you do have to replace these wires, now would be a good time to do that while you got the board out. Okay? Anyway, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for part two. My name is Hans George Campbell, and until next time...